Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! On the last Stockbox video, you voted for Goth! I was already juggling the idea around in my head, so I was pleased to see a lot of you also asked for a Goth-style boyfriend for Juon. This is going to be so much fun! Uh, and dark and brooding! Gotta stay in that Goth mindset best I can! To the Stockbox! Alright, here's our big old box of dolls. Some of you noticed certain dolls in here last time. I should point out these boxes contain both potential projects and completed ones. It's more like storage. Anyway. We want to pick out a boy doll, so I was looking through and decided Jackson Jekyll was a promising candidate. This doll is from the Save Frankie line that launched with the Freaky Fusion movie. I remember because I bought him in stores since this character is somewhat hard to come by. He's got a very distinctive facial mold with a strong jawline, so I feel that will translate nicely into an edgier character. Time for his new look! He's honestly got a lot of goth points already going for him. The black hair, eyebrow piercing, tattoo... But I've got a different vision in mind. Just like I promised, I resisted sketching out any plans ahead of time, so it's all in the moment. So, I've cut off his hair and prepared some boiling hot water to dunk the doll into. This will make the vinyl head nice and squishy so it's easy to pop off and won't twist or break the neck mechanism inside. Next, take pliers to yank out the remaining hair from the neck hole. Some people suggest I use tweezers for this part, but I find the finger pinching motion from using tweezers wears out and cramps my hand a lot faster than if I just use the larger and easier to hold pliers. Do whatever works best for you. Use acetone to swipe off the factory paint. Hmm, I should take out the eyebrow piercing. Whoa, not what I was expecting. Here's the face all cleaned off. Is it any wonder why so many doll artists love to use Monster High? Look at the quality sculpting. Okay, so next up, I'm thinking tattoos will suit him nicely. To prepare the plastic body, I begin by whittling off the extra plastic around the seams and remove any production markings. I also take a fine grain sanding block and subtly scratch up the whole body. This should help our sealant grab onto the plastic body, which is the next step. I'll be using MSC to cover everything from head to toe. After 30 minutes, we can begin tattooing this guy. Because the plastic is now more receptive to pigment, work on top of a cushy surface, like this cloth, so that you don't accidentally scratch or mark the body. Now, what to give him? In my head, I imagine this character is a modern Japanese man, so he might have both traditional and modern tattoos. So, in a Yakuza-esque fashion, I looked up images of traditional Japanese tattoos called Irezumi. I also looked up images of Oni, which are the fiendish-looking ogre-like monsters in Japanese mythology. Using watercolor pencils, I freehand a design onto his back while referencing inspiration on my laptop off-screen. Just like with a face-up, I begin with a color similar to the skin tone for the rough sketch. I did this first tattoo on his back to warm up, just in case I make a big mistake or something. <laughs> then at least it won't be on the front of the doll, right? I decided to incorporate the original character's yin-yang tattoo into a tiger oni design, and use the bright, saturated colors I see in Irazumi tattoos. There we go. Not bad. I touched up the character in the tiger's mouth with a little tan paint, but otherwise this is all watercolor pencil. It was much of the same for all the rest of his tattoos. Thinking up what to give him was the hardest part. I know for real people, each tattoo either has a story or is very meaningful to them, so to just think up a whole body's worth on the spot was difficult. So instead, I continued to look online for what other real people had chosen and modified it to fit my doll's aesthetic. I did come up with a couple original ones on the spot, like our Windigo here. 
I also definitely wanted some Japanese written on him somewhere, so I've given him this chest tattoo, which reads, <clears throat> Ame fute chi katamaru. Literally translated means, after the rain, earth hardens. It's a Japanese proverb that basically means adversity builds character. I thought a tough guy might choose to have this as a tattoo. I thought it was cool at any rate. If there are any native Japanese speakers in the audience, I'm sure you'll let me know if this is a lame thing to have tattooed or not. Touch up loose pigment and dust with a kneaded eraser as you go, and remember not to touch any tattoos on the opposite side of the doll. Be careful how you hold it while you work. Since we are using watercolor pencils, sweaty hands could smudge and melt all your hard work. If you're worried about that, take the doll outside and give it another spray of sealant. I sealed mine twice as I went along. The most difficult areas were the round shoulders and arms because the surface you're working on falls away so quickly. Take it slow so that you don't slip. And of course, this is a doll, not real skin, so naturally the design won't connect perfectly on each piece when you're moving the joints around. Something to keep in mind as you design your doll's teeny tiny tattoos. I think the mix of traditional and modern was a good choice. It makes him feel more like a real person, you know? Like someone who is proud of their heritage, but also gets personal tattoos meaningful to them specifically. It was also fun thinking up and finding what to give this character. As the type of person who doesn't want any tattoos, this was a fun experience for me to vicariously get all inked up, even if it's just through my artwork. To finish him up, the body was already so nicely prepped with MSC that I felt obliged to go ahead and blush him. This means applying reds and browns to areas of the doll to make it appear more lifelike. I usually hit up the wrist, elbow, and shoulder joints, as well as the contours of the body, like around the pecs, in the middle of his back, and a little on the collarbone. This makes the plastic look a lot more like skin and amplifies the sculpting of the doll. After this, apply one more layer of sealant and the body is done. Now for hair. Goth style is usually associated with black, but I'm going for a more pastel gothy character, so let's give him light pink hair. Don't worry, his clothes will still be all black. If you were hoping for a full out classic style goth doll, I'm sorry about that, but I can't help myself. I'm a girl obsessed with rainbow colors and pastels, so give me this one. Following Mozekito's good old wig tutorials yet again, I prepared a wig cap and wefts. I should point out that around this time, Hextian's brand new doll video featuring a Korean pop star came out, and I was super inspired by that. So it's because of Christian's excellent doll that I wanted to do a poofy yarn wig too. I won't explain all the steps because Mozekito's channel's got you covered there. I did add one extra step though, because no matter how many glue layers I use, I find my glue wig caps always relax and want to flatten over time. So to combat this, I'm running a tight line of stitches around the perimeter of the cap. Then it's weft time. Starting in the back, I glue on weft by weft and work my way around in a spiral. In the middle of this process, they always reach what I call the 15th century monk phase. Eventually, it's all filled in and you've waited for the glue to dry. Honestly, I kind of like it crazy long and poofy, but I've got a different hairstyle in mind. So, taking your scissors and eyebrow razor, shave it down bit by bit. Take off large chunks with the scissors, then refine with the eyebrow razor for that shaggy layered look. I tried using these fancy layering shears, but they didn't work so well on the yarn. Yeah, that's more like it. Short in the back and shaggy on top. Now that the wig is finished, let's give him a new face. Starting with pastels to blush the face. As always, the materials I use in this video are listed in the description box below if you want to know exactly what I'm using. I've said it before, but as always when referencing a specific demographic, I have plenty of photos on my laptop to reference as I go. I wanted a more stern, tough guy face, so I gave him thick eyebrows and more realistic eyes. They actually came out a little smaller and more realistic than I intended. 
I mean, I still want him to match Juon, but at this rate it's going to look like a real human being standing next to a cartoon character. But this was one of those times the doll took on a life of its own, and I just went with it. Similar to Titanium's face-up, I was going for that under-lid look. I didn't pull it off so well this time. They were too heavy, so I erased most of it later. Color-wise, it's a fairly straightforward face. Black, brown, and a little pink in the corners of the eyes and on the lips. I come back in with pastels to essentially give the doll eyeshadow and fuller eyebrows. I add some white to the eyes and subtle freckles and blemishes to the skin. To finish his face, I take a small paintbrush, wet it with water, then lift some pigment directly off the pencils to the doll's face. I paint the white highlight and add subtle red glares inside the iris color. When you're done, seal the deal with MSC, then use a gloss varnish to add that spark of life to the eyes. And let's give him a new metal eyebrow piercing by bending a small jewelry ring into that shape. With that, we can reunite his head and body. Up until this point, I was so used to seeing his body separate that when I put them back together, I was like, wow, this guy's head is huge! <laughs> Guess I forgot it was Monster High proportions we're working with. Now for the clothes. We're keeping it simple and sleek. To keep in step with the modern Asian goth aesthetic, I started by hoovering up all the black fabrics and ribbons I own. I had to dig far past all the pinks and rainbow tulle to find these. I sketched up a new pattern to be a loose-fitting oversized kimono, cut out the pieces, stitched it together, and hemmed the neckline with a black ribbon. I've owned this really cool ribbon for a couple years now and haven't used it on anything. Now seems like the time. It totally looks like a string of vertebrae or a spinal column. For pants, I wanted the drop crotch Harlem pants that are popular right now, so I modified my existing pattern until I had this. I also stitched some separate pockets on top and used embroidery thread to look like drawstrings. Using epoxy sculpt, I'll be lightly modifying this pair of shoes to have gigantic platforms. I don't know about you, but I'm loving the giant platforms trend. Then again, I'm pretty deep into Japanese street fashion these days. They're so funky and it makes a great silhouette. Once the epoxy hardens, I paint on two coats of black acrylic, then seal it in with a matte varnish. And for a finishing touch, I glue on ribbons for a design accent. Yes, they're inspired by Why Are You Shoes, if you're familiar. And that's the whole outfit! The doll's finished! I wasn't sure what to do when you all voted for Goth Doll, but that's the joy of Stockbox. You guys help me think outside the box. I usually prefer extravagant fantasy outfits, but a simple black ensemble was perfect to show off his main design element, the tattoos. I had way too much fun during his photo shoot because every picture looked like an album cover or music video still. He's got so much moodiness and angst, it's almost tangible. There's really only one name for this character, and that's Tatsuo. It's a Japanese name that translates to something like Dragon Man, which is awesome. I wanted to go with Ryu at first, but that's a little too cliche among us American otakus. We all had a character named Ryu in our 7th grade mangas, admit it. 
And I swear, I chose the name Tatsuo before it occurred to me that Tatsuo includes tats. Like tattoos, get it? Please don't unsubscribe. Tatsuo and Juan make a pretty cute couple, don't they? I imagine it's a classic case of opposites attract. Thank you so much for watching! Make sure you click that little I in the corner of this video to vote on the next Stockbox Dolls theme. And while you're at it, click the like button if you enjoyed this custom. Also subscribe if you haven't, just click all the buttons! And I'll catch you next time! Stay artsy! Annyeong!